second gear? Yeah, go. Finally reviewing Marco's Type R today. You guys have seen this on the channel a lot in the past couple months. I've made very good friends with Marco. He has a 547 wheel horsepower, upgraded turbo, upgraded basically everything, but we'll go over that. And today I'm finally gonna drive it. So, Marco, we need a parts rundown. Oh, that's gonna be tough. I know, you have so many parts. I always forget what I got. Everyone's asking me what's for sale, what I got left, but they want a list, but it's just complicated to make a list right now. So let's start with the turbo. What do you have for turbo? Uh, Garrett, uh, full race, G25 660. Uh, we're running this tune on E20 with methanol, uh, pushing 30 pounds, and we got 547 to the wheel. So what's the turbo inlet pipe on this? It's all part of the kit. Okay. It's the whole turbo kit. Some people think you just buy the turbo from them, and now you have to like, get the whole kit. Okay, so the turbo comes with the inlet pipe and the intake. Right, and the box. And basically all the way down. And then you painted this yourself? Yes. Awesome. I mean, I saw the one for Spoon that it was yellow and blue, and I just want to make it, you know, I didn't want it red, but then I have my color, so I just made the same design, but just make it, you know, personal. Looks really good. Then you have APR. all the good looking stuff. APR. And this is Password AGM. I got every single one that they sell. Wow. And yeah. this is the only carbon fiber straw bar that is in the market right now. It's beautiful. I got Mr. Motor catch can in the back. You can Did barely you see it. Do you feel the difference when you put that strap bar in? I used to have the one he has in here. Um, I can even uh, bleeds. And the only difference is when you park in, you can feel, you know, when you're going in an angle, like the car sort of lift a little bit. Yeah, like when you're going in the driveway. But I be, I'm guessing that's more the suspension more than that. It, it just makes it more stiff, but nothing really. What's your favorite part about this car? The turbo. The noises it makes are yeah. pleasant. You guys have heard that pretty often lately, but uh, we will hear it today for sure. So it's that's like, the favorite modification you've done? Well, what I like about it so far, it was the various parts that I think it just completes the bill, especially with the size, and then the, the way I have my wheel set up. For those of you who may have forgotten, I did order these various parts, and then I decided I didn't want to put them on the car, I wanted the moving kit instead. So I sold them to Marco for a pretty good price. He paint matched them, and I think the side skirts are, the side skirts are my favorite part. Yeah. And then this right here is the Saibon three-piece front grill, or is it a one-piece? It's a one-piece already. And also the APR Racing. What is that? A splitter. And then we got the Warner, which no one uses. That's European. Right, talk a little bit about your intercooler, because I don't think a lot of people know that this even exists. Well, it already comes for the FK8, and that's a German company. You know, you can't go wrong with that. They're more known for, like, Audis, you know, Mercedes, and that stuff, you know, Volkswagen. But no one sees it on FK. And then my mechanic told me that's the one to go, so that's the one I got. Okay. And who tuned you? Oh, uh, Manolito in PR. Okay. I'll put his Instagram on the screen for you guys. And then the mechanic, fun. you know, just tag him on there. He did everything, all the work, even from suspension, camera kit, exhaust, intercooler, everything was done by him. I dropped off my car and I picked it up like in a month because there was so much stuff going into it. But if you see the connection he did on the, on the um, flex view and everything. Yeah, this is a really cool part. I mean, his work is just so clean. That's super nice. I will probably bring my car to hand to get my springs put on. Yeah. Well, I got springs for sale. What wheels are these? What are well, the specs? Those are BMS racing wheels. They come, that's 18 by 9.5 plus 35. And I got the Toyota Proxys uh, 888. And you see it like I barely use this wheel, but it grabs like crazy. Some people say when it's raining, like, you know, it's not, you know, like you can't control it, but no, I, I didn't have that problem. To me, I love them. 
um, and then on the back, those are the, the rays, the Gram Light 57DR. Uh, those are 18 by 9.5 plus 38. And I got on the stars, I got 255, uh, 35. On the front, I have 265, 35. Okay. I only went with the 255 here because when I put my kids in here, I didn't want it to rub or nothing. But I noticed that on the front, you have more flying sprays, you know. So have you had any rubbing at all? With nothing. Setup? Especially having carbon fire fenders, you know, I wanted to be safe and that's what everyone is running. Now I've seen people with like 295, but that you have to get a smaller wheel, you know what I mean? Or just change all your suspension and stuff like that. I don't want to go crazy on that. I just want to go fast. Right. But for this amount of power, you need really grippy tires. Right. And, uh, I did try the forties, and the forties I could hear rubbing a little bit on the inside. Nothing crazy, but thirty-five is the way to go. Wow! Yeah, I can only fit one figure in there. Yeah. As you can tell by Marco's Instagram handle, and just by the look of his car, he has a lot of carbon fiber parts, and these are all real carbon fiber parts. So that was one of your big things is that you didn't want to have any fake carbon on the car right right and like one of the people telling me oh I want to buy the you know the tailgate lift gate instead of the those pieces and they don't understand when you buy that the carbon is gonna be from here all the way here it doesn't include none of this it doesn't even include this part and the tailgate is like thirteen hundred dollars and then this piece is like almost a thousand wow so then you gotta add this so for me since I paint cars I painted the bottom black to hide it and then I put these two pieces on and it looks great. It does look really good. And you also time and not, you know, they fit in the, the whole line. In yeah. There. So you painted your roof black as well? Yes. And you didn't go with the crystal black pearl on here, right? No, solid black. Of course you get the mirror caps. The fenders I think are really cool. Yeah, for the stay bond. And then this, I have a lot of work in here. People don't see the way this come on the inside. Usually they don't shine, they got a lot of imperfections. And right. I spent like a week or two just fixing all the imperfections on the inside of the hood and then spray it black. The craziest thing about this car, guys, I think the craziest thing is that this is the stock clutch still, which is ridiculous. Oh, it starts up in R mode too. Do you ever drive in anything other than R? Never. Wow, <laughs> okay. I really like the steering wheel. That's gonna be one of my next modifications. What, what steering wheel is this? <coughs> That's the factory one, I got it wrapped. Really? Yeah, they don't want to put the money into it. There's a company in Orlando actually, and they travel almost all, all Florida, and they're wrapping for you. So even in R mode, with these springs going over that speed bump, that wasn't awful. No, it's not. With three of us in the car, is it gonna uh, rub it all? It's not gonna, okay. I drive with my kids most of the time. Yeah. This feels, <laughs> I, I really like that shifter. I'm a huge fan of the stock Type R shifter. I think it's just, it's kind of effortless. But this is something else. I mean, this reminds me of the Acuity shifter I had in my SI. Oh, wow. <laughs> that turbo spools very quickly. That's surprising for a big turbo too. All right, guys, so what I'm noticing before we get on you know, a, a bigger road so I can hit it a little bit. With Marco setup, this car feels a lot more, it just feels more stiff, but in a good way. It's still very comfortable. Probably because you have meaty tires on, that helps a little bit. Right. But I think the combination of the Eibach springs and the wheels and the strut bar, and we're in R mode, so all that to put together, this feels super good. It's, it's too bad that we don't have this up in Northern California where I just lived, because um, lots of curvy roads up there. I never went over your exhaust. What's your exhaust setup? Gretty. Gretty all the way through, Purell. Yes. Uh, no, I do have Purell front pipe. All right, here we go, boys. Started. Yeah, sure. I'm babying it. <laughs> yeah, 7800, remember? Oh my God, those turbo sounds are just ridiculous. The blow-off valve, did that come with the turbo kit as well? It's all part of the kit, basically, yeah. You get an option, though. Oh my God. Those downshifts are crazy as well. And now you're making me think of getting a blow-off valve. <laughs> 7,800 RPM yeah. is your red line. Yes. And these are stock internals, stock clutch. Right. You haven't, you haven't had any issues with the transmission. No. This is ridiculous. It's custom too. And 
and you're almost at 10,000 miles. What up there? Oh, it's got lane departure on. I also have the Hasbro bottom mounts. Yes, you can definitely tell this car has the 72A, right? right. 72A motor mounts. And it feels good. Like, my car, I, I'm noticing that my motor mounts are definitely failing so that my shifts are not as smooth. And like when I, whenever I let off the throttle, it's jerky. I don't think I'm gonna go 72A. Yeah, I'll probably do 62 like you said. Yeah, you know what? I think that's my favorite part of this car too, is just the sound. All right. up here on the left yeah what kind of cars have you beaten in mexico obviously with this i mean most v8s to be honest i did took uh two hellcats and they were just one of them i didn't have space to pass him but i was always hitting the bumper and the guy was like what the yeah <laughs> well taking it a hellcat is pretty impressive man for a honda civic you gotta hit that second gear all the way to red second gear yeah, go. racing I don't get that anymore with my car yeah I mean you have like a hundred eighty more horsepower than I do right. this is insane I just gotta hear that turbo more dude how good these stock brakes are. I don't know. Honda knocked it out at the park with this car. Dude. Yeah, it's that one. The light. Right here? Yeah. See? So this gauge down here, this is your... Flex fuel. Flex fuel. Yeah, I have to be on, to on 21. Okay. And then this right here? That's like methanol. Methanol, okay. You'll see it after 13 pounds, then it's gonna start on red on the bottom on the extra line. And this is my boost cage, basically. It goes all the way to 30. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't even... I don't have enough brain power to You'll see it on the focus video. on that while I'm flooring the car. I just have to focus on <laughs> keeping it straight. That's what I like about the car, you know? I put all this money into the car, I was able to build it. I made one of... The, I got one of the most uh, complete builds in Florida. And you can daily it. Yeah, well, you do daily it. Right. I mean, at its core, it is a Honda Civic. Yeah. It's just a really, really well done Honda Civic. Man, I love mine. This, my Type R is the fourth Honda Civic that I've had, and it won't be my last. Right. I just... I was just talking to myself with my work on the on the EK9. Okay. If I get excited, I might put a K24 or something in there. Oh, that would be sweet. Of course, same mechanics, same tuner. Dickman Road. That's the road that I took. Yeah, I came that way too. Okay. Yeah, we are over there. Okay. That, I didn't even notice the name. That's that's different. It is. <laughs> he just laughed. And that's my son. He, he's not so excited about me selling the car. I told him two days yeah. ago. But he, he broke my heart too. <laughs> I want him to keep this thing. Like after at this point, what happened is like, I spent what? Probably 10 months? just going at it. I had a car for like 10 months. How much money did you put into this car? I'll say probably a little bit over 30,000. And that's including? Uh, everything. Labor, everything. Wow. Plus, I did pay 50,000 for this car. Because that was the only one I found. Yeah. 
When did you buy this? I bought it like in uh, September, October. There wasn't much time after that that they continued to produce these cars, so. Right, the, like this, when I went to the dealership limited. and I said I want a Type R, it was just this one. Yeah. That's one. I could I didn't get to choose a color. I couldn't play with the price. It, no. it was what it was. Fifty thousand, you want yeah. it or not? Unless you wanted to fly up to like Minnesota or something, you you did what you could, man. Right, and like I said, I drove the car on a Friday from a friend, and then I went the same day and bought the same car. Yeah, that's right. So I didn't I you didn't fell think up about it right away, man. I drove it. I saw the features that it has, and I always been a Honda lover. I said I have to have it. Let me ask you this: You've done so many things to this car. What was the very first modification you did? Do you remember that? Intake. The pure oil intake. Which, it, they came up with the turbo, you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Wow, so the first, that was my first modification as well. Yeah. Imagine if I didn't have the tune on my Type R, right. and then I went to go drive this. Going from a stock Type R to this, and that's 240 horsepower difference. That would be, that'd be insane. I'm, I'm saying, everyone told me this car is fast, this car, but I, when I drove it, I was like, yeah, it's fast. But then a week I was like, this car is not fast. You know what I mean? Because I come in like, I wanted a Corvette. I wanted a B8, you know? So I wanted that strength. And then I love the fact that I, you can keep up with B8s at this point. Oh yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, even uh, when my, I know it's an older V8, and you, I don't, you probably didn't see this video, but when my Type R was stock, so all I had was the intake, I think, I raced a stock, I did watch C5 the video. Corvette. I did watch the video. And we were, I mean, we were dead even. Right. Well, that's when everyone told me what fuel system do I have? And that's when I talked to my mechanic and you got to the point where it's not really worth it because I'm going to spend like at least $3,000 on fuel system just for me to get an extra 30 to 40 horsepower. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's why you went big turbo instead of... Right. I mean, even now, if I, if I upgrade it, then I'm going to be there, you know? Yeah. And then if I open my motor, then I put like 20,000 on the engine, I'll probably be on the six, 700 horses, but then at the same time, it's like, it won't be a daily no more. Yeah. Yeah, the shifter, I, I love the shifter, man. You're making me second guess whether I want to keep- That's that one rock I have on that brake, huh? Oh, that's the rock. <laughs> Marco has the rock in the brake, boys. For three months. If you if you have a Type R, if you if we have had one, you know what? I'm talking about it only makes the noise in reverse and every time i pull the car in i take the and i'm gonna take the wheel out it's not there like it doesn't make a noise no more for like i say okay this friday i'm gonna do it and the, the noise is gone and the next week is there <laughs> you know how it is well thank you very much for letting me drive this this is that was nice damn dude um as i look around i'm noticing more and more things you've done there's just too many parts to list i'll try my best to include a complete list of Marco's parts in the description of this video. Even this stuff right here, this, what'd you do to this? This is an overlay? Yes. Something it's here. a lot shinier. All this. Yeah, I mean, I mean, dude, everywhere you look, there's something, something else with this car. What'd you think, Mark? It's nice. Yeah. I can't believe your dad's selling this, dude. Me Marco's saying that his calipers are peeling? Oh. Yeah, that's weird. They usually get replaced as a warranty, but as you can see, my car has no warranty. No warranty, no, nope, not anymore. I avoid every single one. Not a bad and thing now, at all. what can I do now? I'm stuck. There's nothing else I can add to this car. Yeah, you're kind of right, man. You're kind of right. I, I told Marco, you know, if money wasn't an object, right. you could just keep this in the garage, buy something else and start tinkering, right. but money is definitely an object, so. Yeah, I, I understand, man. I mean, I last year alone, just, for the YouTube channel, I bought and I sold three cars. So I understand what it's like to, yeah. you know, have your feelings change about something and then get rid of it. But I mean, I love the car itself. Uh, if it was up to me, I would never get rid of it. But like I said, at this point, if I sell it now, I get my money back. If I keep it, then who knows? You know, if the price depreciation goes down and then people don't like the new type car and then this one goes up again, then probably but i don't want to i don't want to try it you know that's all i have for this video thank you guys very much for watching and if you're interested in any of the parts that marco's selling from his car which is he's selling everything from it you can contact him via his instagram which is again right there carbon fk8 and yeah i'll see you guys next video thanks for watching